Greetings, my fellow hunters, and welcome again. Today, we're going to basically be going a bit more stealthily this time. So no rushing into the door and start hacking away. We're going to be stealthily taking on this anime that's been an interesting one all year round. And yes, I'm talking about Spy Family. And no, not Spy X Family, as everybody's been saying. It's Spy Family. So, as I always say, my hunters, let the hunt begin. The story of the series is basically set in an alternate World War II situation, where basically a international incident happened in the eastern country of where one of its diplomats was sadly killed. And because of this, it threatens the whole safety of the world as possibly could lead out to all-out war. So the western country immediately sends their best spy, Twilight, in order to infiltrate the eastern country in order to basically prevent that from happening, as his assignment is to basically create a family to enroll a child into a prestigious school in order to gain access to the government's secrets, basically. And on the way, he marries a assassin, which he doesn't know your and a young girl named Anya, who's basically secretly a telepath. It's all so fascinating, and while, yes, it's that's the simplistic, and honestly, the series does bring up the whole notion of the mission up every now and again, that isn't the main focus. And while, yes, it's the primarily focus, it's not brought up constantly. So it, it's reminded every now and again, but not to the point that it's annoying. What's the strength of the series is just seeing a super badass spy trying to be a family man. And it kind of has a charming feel to it, if you think about it. It's like he's used to basically like fighting evil people and basically saving the world countless times, but yet here he is, basically just trying to be a family man and while well, keeping a secret from his wife, which he only married, who is your, only to gain more credence, so he's less inconspicuous. But oh, but as you watch the series, you can show that he actually generally has feelings for his family. It's hard for him because he never knew what it was like to have a family, but over time he actually shows to have more of a human side to him. He's not cold and calculating all the time. He does have a genuine warm heart. It's also fascinating and just watching him trying to balance his life between being a spy and being a lovely family man. It's also entertaining, honestly. It's like, you can see the stress on he's going on with between like keeping them both balanced, but I digress. I do have one little nitpick, and yes, I know it's my uh, problem, and I'm basically picking a little nits at this, but I feel like we see too much of... Forger, but enough of your. Not enough of your, if you know what I mean. Yes, I know, she's basically the assassin, so it's kind of weird to focus on her, but have you seen how she's basically the waifu of the year now? Goodness grief, I can't go anywhere without seeing your. <laughs> but yes, if I did have one little problem, we said we don't see enough here. No, a friend of me, spoiler warnings, did say that we'll be seeing more of it later, and hopefully in the second season, which has been denounced for October, so... I'm doing this review just a little bit to clarify my catalogue. But if you ask my humble opinion on the story, it's a well-formulated story with interesting characters, good jobs, and just good around laughs. I think my personal favourite is the... I can't remember what episode it was, but it was basically your had to basically pretend to be a super spy for Anya because she was able to get into the super elite school. And I kind of enjoyed that. It was like showing... <laughs> it was so entertaining to watch him just be like... He didn't want to do it, but he did it because he knew he had to please his daughter. And moments like that just put a smile on my face. Speaking of characters, I think that we're going to be talking about them. So let's get on to that one, shall we? Now that the story is over and done with, we can now focus on the next important thing, the main characters. And while, yes, Spy Family has a lot of supporting characters, I feel like they're not important to the overall story as, say, Lloyd, Yor, and Anya are. So, unfortunately, I will have to skip them and mainly focus on those three. But, nonetheless, I will be saying some things at the end, as per usual, my hunters. So, anyway, let's begin with the main man himself, Lloyd Forger. So, first up, we have the main protagonist, Lloyd Forger, a.k.a. Twilight. He is basically a spy from Westalius in order to infiltrate Ostalius into, basically, um, prevent war. At first glance, he's a very cold... I wouldn't say cold, but a very calculative person. He looks at every small detail and is very intelligent in figuring out solutions to any problems, even if it is a bit of difficult for him. He's always finding a way. He's a very well-thought-out character. He likes planning ahead 
And he, well, he doesn't let his emotions show much. During the series, you can see that he does show a few cracks, that he actually does care about his family, even though they're basically supposed to be a proxy for him in order to continue on with his mission. There's some genuine feeling behind him that you could feel like, well, yes, he's basically trying to flash a smile, but deep down, he does care about his family, even if it is fake. And I feel like that makes it interesting that, well, yes, he's basically has a mission. He does actually care for everybody he loves, which is kind of sweet if you think about it. And it does bring an interesting dynamic to things, the lengths he would go for some people. <laughs> but overall, Lloyd's an fa- interesting character and fun to watch in his antics. Next up, we have Your Forger, a.k.a. Wife of the Season, a.k.a. An Assassin, a.k.a. Wife to Lloyd Forger. Yours is an interesting case, because on the outside, she seems like a klitsy woman who is basically just trying her best to move on to the day and day without causing much trouble or basically trying to stick out. But underneath all that, she is far from that. She basically is a assassin and a very good one at that, a, known as the Thorn Princess. And she's very well known in the underworld, apparently. And, well, that's much I can say about her. Well, yes, she's interesting and she loves Anya as if she was her own. Literally, she's done a lot of things to protect Hanya to almost a comedic uh, amount. But honestly, it's genuine love for the girl. And she does actually like Lloyd as a husband, even though they were married for less than a few months. And it's all so fun dynamic. I actually love the dynamics of basically the secrets between those two. Lloyd being a spy, you are being an assassin, but none of them knowing their profession, as I said. (laughs) It's also entertaining just watching her being uh, embarrassed as well when she's trying to do wifely things. Like one episode, basically, uh, I'm spoiling a bit of spoilers here, yours brother came about and he wanted them to kiss it to prove they love each other. But she couldn't, so she was embarrassed, which was all sorts adorable. And I think that's another word you could add to yours. She's frankly adorable. I have very few words to say about that, but I say it's mostly positive. You can enjoy her moments on screen as she's basically doing a lot of interesting things as being a wife and assassin at the same time. Now, I gotta ask you before I continue, do I really need to explain who she is because basically she's been memefied all over the place? (sighs) But unfortunately I do have to explain, so here is Anya Forger, the adoptive daughter of both Lloyd and your forger. And basically the best way I could say is that she's a cheeky child with telepathic powers, if I've not mentioned before. Yes, she can read people's minds, and she's a very cheeky one at that. Because she gets a lot of trouble, and basically, not too much, but she sometimes gets into trouble, and Yor rescues her a lot, or Lloyd, but mostly those two. And it's all entertaining watching the dynamics, as she can read their minds and repeat what they say, and they still don't get it, that she's a telepath. It's all so entertaining, honestly. <laughs> Almost adorable. And I know Anya, like I said, has been memefied to oblivion. Or I should say, Hunter's Nightmare. But she's rather fun, and she's interesting at dynamics. She's a bit of a spy fan, ironically, even though, and she knows her father's a spy. So, there's that. <laughs> so, my final thoughts on the characters are pretty positive, honestly. They all bring their own twist to things, and it's also funny, and it brings a little levity to the series, despite the fact we know in the back of our heads that if... You, Lloyd fails, it's all-out war. But regardless, it's just fun watching the interactions between the characters. There's so much positive energy going about, it almost makes me smile. And yeah, that's all I have to say about the characters. Well written and very well utilized and enjoyable to the end. The animation for this series is very well done. Honestly, it's very good and very simplistic, but that simplistic animation leads credence to how excellent it is. Because of it, the moments where it basically flares up stick out all the better. I think I love how the movement looks so smooth and natural, especially for Twilight's more... How do I put this? Um, For his more um, action-packed scenes, it's actually very smooth and well-animated and choreographed. You can feel a certain crunch to it in every hit that uh, Twilight does. And I like it, the little visual uh, cues that uh, Anya has, basically. It's so <laughs> memeable if you've kept up with the whole situation with the, the series. It's quite well done. And the more darker moments really make it excellently stand out. I think, personally, my favorite is basically on how visceral it looks a little bit, especially with uh, when Yor does her business. It's very well animated, very well done, and a pleasant treat for the eyes. Honestly, I wish... 
I wish it was a little bad because I had more to complain about, but because it's so good, I have very little to complain about. And yeah, it's actually pretty well done. So the music for me is basically very well done. It's really entertaining to watch. I love the opening and ending because they've got such personalities. They're not so hyperactive. It's all so calm and so basically, how do I put this? Also relaxing before we get into the series. And I gotta say, a lot of the music reminds me of old those old spy thriller movies you see like James Bond and all that jazz. Kind of reminds me a bit of it with the tone it is, especially with the more action-oriented scenes that happen. Also... Get your blood pumping. But I have to say my personal favorite episode is episode 5 with the music uh, insert song, You Know. Basically, one of my top favorite songs in insert into the series. It was a huge surprise when I first watched it. Honestly, I really wish more series would do this where they just basically put a catchy song in the middle of it that's just basically just something so appropriate. <laughs> So, my final thoughts on the series. If you've been least watched my video, you would have known I would give it a solid pass. It was actually one of the better series that I've seen this year, along with My Dress Up Darling, and I think I already did a review on that, first impressions. But putting those two together, it is an interesting and fresh take for something that I'm not into. I'm not in, usually into this whole alternate uh, world scenario that isn't basically a fantasy. So, along with My Dress Up Darling and Spy Family, I think it's basically a good, interesting year that I branched out a little bit, and I am looking forward to the second season to see more of the stories. So yes, I, if I enjoyed it, I'm sure you would. It's got enough charm to it that's basically just so enjoyable. It's interesting enough that it's just so good to watch, and it's also entertaining that you won't have a dull moment. In fact, I think it was more quite octane a lot of times. But anyway, I thank you, my hunters. If you enjoyed watching it, give this a like and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on this series, if you enjoyed it or not. Please, I would appreciate a good discussion. Also, if you feel so generous, feel free to pledge to my Patreon down below if you want to help support this hunter out. Links to my Twitter and my Discord down below. And my Twitch, if you want to see me stream. I keep trying to get back into it, so you should be lucky. And thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it, and as I always say, may the good blood... Guide your way.